If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. What we'll do in order to answer this question is first draw a picture of this charged water droplet, and then we'll also show the free body diagram of the forces acting on that water droplet. And here is the water droplet, and perhaps the most obvious force acting on the water droplet is the gravitational force, which of course points downward, and we can label that force mg. And the question notes that the water droplet remains stationary in the air, so essentially it is floating. And of course, in order to float, the downward gravitational force must be balanced by an upward force of some kind. And so we at least know that we can draw a second force vector that's pointing upward, and it's going to have to have the same magnitude as the gravitational force in order for this water droplet to stay stationary in the air. And it turns out, of course, that this force is the electrical force. And how do we know that? Well, we have a charged water droplet, and there's also an electric field present. And anytime we have a charge placed in an electric field, it's going to, an it's going to experience an electric force. And so we've called that Fe, and as noted, these two forces must balance each other in order for the water droplet to remain floating. So we know that the sum of the forces acting on the water droplet has to be zero. Now the upward force Fe is positive, whereas the gravitational force is downward and is therefore negative. So we have Fe minus mg is equal to zero. And we can go ahead and add mg over to the right hand side, leading to this equation. Now we're learning in this chapter that the electrical force Fe is equal to the product of the electric field and the charge. So we can actually substitute E multiplied by Q for Fe. In addition, we know that for any object, the density of that object is going to equal its mass divided by its volume. And if we multiply both sides of that equation by volume, we would have volume times density is equal to the mass. And you might be wondering why would we need to even consider this equation? Well, our equation over here has mass, but the question does not give us the mass of this water droplet. It only gives us the radius. Well, it turns out that for a sphere, the volume is equal to 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So if we take that expression for volume and multiply by the density of water, that would end up giving us the mass of water. So we can take this expression and substitute it in for m into our equation. So now we have an equation that involves Q, which is the charge, and that's actually going to be what we want to solve for. The question is asking not so much for the charge, but the excess electron charges. But we'll see that once we calculate this charge Q, we'll be able to convert that into a number of electron charges. So we're going to go ahead and isolate Q by dividing both sides of the equation by the electric field E. Now, at this point, we are prepared to plug in the known values the electric field strength was given to us in the question as 150 newtons per coulomb, so that will go in for E. The radius was given in millimeters, so note we'll have to convert that to the standard unit of meters by multiplying it by 10 to the minus 3. The density of water is a known value, and it is equal to 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And then we have G, which of course is 9.8 meters per second squared, so let's plug in all those known values. And when we carefully plug that in, we can see that the charge is approximately 2.18 times 10 to the minus 11, and then the unit of charge, of course, is coulombs. Now, as mentioned earlier, we can convert this amount of charge into a number of electrons by noting that one electron contains a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So if we multiply by this conversion factor in red, we'll see that the coulombs will cancel out, leaving us with electrons. And when we multiply, we get 1.36 times 10 to the positive 8 electrons. So that would be the number of elect excess electrons on that spherical water droplet.
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe. You can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.